This next patient is a 30 year old man, status post trauma. Here you see some images from an axial head CT. Just take a look at those and look for the abnormalities. Just some additional images here from a little bit higher in the head. Here you see some images from an MRI. These are diffusion weighted images. Here's just a flare to go along with those. So your question here is what MRI sequence might be used clinically to further evaluate this finding? Do you want a post-contrast? Do you want post-contrast flare? Do you want DTI? Or would you like susceptibility weighted imaging? So here you see the answer to that question is kind of given away. This is susceptibility weighted imaging, which is a very heavy T2 weighted imaging that doesn't have refocusing. So you're seeing areas where the local magnetic field is distorted. And uh, here you see some, some abnormalities. So your question B is, what is the mechanism of these findings? Just take a look at those answered choices. So this is a case of traumatic shear injury, or which is sometimes referred to as diffuse axonal injury. The mechanism for this is high impact trauma, frequently with rotational forces. And the mechanism of injury is that you get shear between tissues of different properties, and you get injury to the blood vessels, which can cause hemorrhage and edema in those areas. Typically, the imaging findings that you're going to see is multifocal hemorrhage, commonly in locations where there's different density or different tissue properties between adjacent structures commonly along the corpus callosum or at the gray-white junction. Susceptibility imaging is really the best to show the full extent of the injury, while those other modalities are shown uh, are used to show other things. Now here's your CT. What you'll see is some hemorrhage in the inferior frontal lobe, kind of a common location for trauma. Here you see a few areas of hemorrhage at the gray-white junction. If you take a look at the MR, what you're going to see on flare is you see some areas of edema with central uh, kind of darkness or central susceptibility. You see maybe some hyperintensity within a sulcus, which is probably some subarachnoid blood. Here you see a lesion along the body of the corpus callosum there. If you do susceptibility weighted imaging, what you see is the extent of injury is significantly larger than you're able to see on those other modalities. So it's much greater than what you see on CT. You see it nearly every kind of subcortical location. You see a lot of these areas of susceptibility. Those are areas of micro hemorrhage and tissue injury where there's little small amounts of blood products. So that kind of tells you the answer to that question. So susceptibility uh, shows you those additional areas of hemorrhage. Uh, DTI is really a research tool. There's not any real clinical application for DTI in evaluating trauma right now, although people are looking into it to assess the white matter tracts and how much disruption they might have. The mechanism of these findings, as we talked about, is shear between tissues of different properties. And when those properties have different tissues, they react to the trauma differently. They compress and deform differently. And then you get injury between those interfaces. Uh, amyloid, I mean, you can have susceptibility peripherally, but uh, that's typically not what you're dealing with in this case. Radiation also uh, can cause areas of susceptibility from microhemorrhages or cavernomas, but the distribution and history are not, are not right in this case. Here you see in the same patient, these are just some images from a lumbar spine. You see a fluid level here in the inferior portion of this, the fecal sac there. You see a little fluid level there. That's blood that's come down from the head. So you see subarachnoid blood is actually layering in the most dependent portion of the CSF in the body, which is in this caudal portion of the fecal sac.